Welcome to the lecture on technology of code making. So, in this lecture we will discuss about codes, why codes are used, what are the different types of codes, what are the process of making codes, all that we will discuss in this lecture. So, we know that in casting if we have to make internal cavity, we have to use cores. So, cores are basically the materials used for making cavities and internal features which cannot be produced by the pattern alone. So, pattern gives the overall cavity of the casting whereas, if suppose you want to have a drilled hole in the casting in that case and if it is not possible to have the pattern because we can have something there, but then the problem of withdrawal may be there. So, in those cases we use the cores. So, cores are nothing but there will be sand or metal portion in that place. So, that when metal is poured at that place there will be no metal. So, basically that, that will be a void space. So, this is how cores are used. So, normally they are made of sand and you have a separate section of core making, but even we use the permanent molding materials like metals and alloys, but since the collapsibility of these cores is not there permanent mold materials like metals and alloys they are restricted to say their shapes. So, we use the sand. Now, the cores are basically subjected to more abuse by the metal because they are surrounded on all the sides by the hot metal. So, you need to have core made of sand of special quality or a better quality then that can be used for the mold making because it is from all the sides it is in contact with hot metal and it has also to evolve the gases it has also to release the gases. So, it has to be permeable it has to have high strength it has to have high hot strength. So, all these properties are required in the cores. So, basically they are subjected to more severe thermal and mechanical conditions. So, that is why they need to be having high strength than the molding sand. So, in this sand basically we have to maintain high level of purity. So, that your refractoriness level is higher. You have also to see that it should not fuse because if they fuse on the surface it will be directly affecting the quality of the surface on which there is fusion and that will completely affect the internal feature and it will lead to rejection of the casting. So, there are many qualities a core must have which we will discuss as the time progresses. What are the desired characteristics of a core? So, as we have discussed the molding sand which have the desired characteristics. Similarly, for a core also you have some qualities which a core must have or a material by which you are making a core it must have. So, in that there is green strength as we know green strength is that strength of core by which you can make the core and it can withstand its own shape and size or its own weight. So, when you we are making the core and we are in the process of making core and we are adding the binders and additives into the core and then we are trying to give it a shape at that time this is the strength by which it can have a, I mean strength. So, that it can withstand its own weight and be in the proper shape. Dry strength means strength when it is dried at that time its strength is known as dry strength. So, that it can withstand the pressure of the metal it is subjected to. Permeability is again the same property by which 
it can allow the gases to escape through it. Refractoriness is the same again to withstand high temperature without fusing. Collapsibility cores also need to be collapsible so that after solidification it does not interfere with the metal it should have the cracks it should collapse easily so that you can remove it easily. Smoothness means the surface of the core must be smooth because that smoothness will only be reflecting on the cavities surface. So, smoothness it must have and for that you must have proper grain shape and size and proper binders so that it gives a smooth finish and you may have to do some finishing operations before you put the core into its place. Friability, friability is the ability to crumble I mean automatically it should crumble once you are trying to remove the cores you are knocking out the cores after the costing has solidified it should crumble easily. If it does not crumble easily it may lead to so you may have to hammer it with large force and in that case it may do you may end up in damaging your casting. So, basically this is the ability of crumbling itself. Low gas emission now the cores are basically subjected to the hot metal from all the sides and if there is moisture and there will be in that case it must be able to exhaust all the gases which are generated inside the core and it must have a good and the thing is permeability that is permeability but low gas emission means but the gas which is emitted it must be minimum. So, that is the requirement for a core if it emits large amount of gases because of the presence of moisture or other volatile substances in those cases the gas emission although should be maintained to be minimum. Now, core making practice. So, how we make the cores? Now, in the while we use the pattern to make the cores pattern is placed over core box filled with sand inverted and baked. So, basically once you have the pattern for making cores you make the core then cores are basically baked so that a large strength is developed core boxes. So, for that you have the core boxes so specially designed boxes are there and since they are to be baked. So, normally they are made of aluminum. So, core boxes are normally made of aluminum you provide the vent holes so that when it releases while baking whatever gases are formed they are released from the cores. You also reinforce with wires so that it gains large strength when we place in the metal and when it has the sagging tendency or it when it is subjected to metallostatic forces that time to withstand that forces sometimes we do the reinforcement of the core with wires. Then core baking is carried out up to temperature of about 650 degree Fahrenheit. So, basically once we make the greens and cores or cores which is having the binder then we need to bake it so that its strength is increased. Now, this baking is done up to temperature of about 650 degree Fahrenheit. So, in that basically initially when you go up to 212 degree Fahrenheit or the boiling point of water that is 100 degree centigrade during that process once we hold it for some time maybe one hour all the moisture is driven off. After that about up to 500 degree Fahrenheit due to this heat the polymerization taking place. In the core making we use organic binders we do not use the clay because there are some reasons for that that we will discuss. So, the strength which is developed during baking is because of the polymerization process at this higher temperature of about 500 degree Fahrenheit and then we go further up to 650 Fahrenheit and during that process the core develops adequate strength. So, that is baked strength. Once we have the core baked we have to do the finishing of the cores 
So, we have to see that core has a proper finish, it has been cleaned on the surface, it, it is of proper size, proper shape and further so that is done by the inspection of the cores that when we have to put it in the cavity then it must be of adequate shape and size and proper finish. So, putting the core at its place that is known as core setting. So, this practice is known as core setting when we keep it at a particular place. Then core knockout, so after the solidification basically core has to be removed. So, that is this practice is core knockout. Use of chaplets, so this chaplet is basically used to support the core which takes care of the buoyancy forces which the core experiences, so that we will may discuss later. Now, core sand ingredients. So, in the core sand basically we have sand grains, binders and other additives just like in molding sand here also you have a core sand then you have binders and binders so that the sand is mixed properly and they have the cohesiveness property and then you also add the additives which provide the specific properties. So, if you talk about the core sand basically the sand should be the pure sand having good purity, silica sand which is completely devoid of clay. So, the silica sand which has the highest purity that must be used, clay should not be there in that sand because the clay basically increases the consumption of the binder and also clay has less refractoriness. So, these are the two reasons why it should be not having any clay. Coarse sand is used for steel foundries because the coarse sand has higher refractiveness and steel foundries where you require higher temperature to cast the metal. So, you use the coarse, coarse silica sands for making the cores. Whereas, if you are to cast cast iron or non-ferrous alloys in cast iron the melting temperature is close to 1140. So, there or in non-ferrous alloys where it will be for copper or for aluminum or for any other non-metal which is even lesser than that of cast iron. So, here you can use the finer sands. So, this is how you have to see that how you have to use the different sands of sizes for getting the cores so that it can withstand the higher temperature. Binders, this core sand needs to be stronger than the molding sand. So, binders which are used are the organic binders, clay is not used as a binder in the core sand or, or core sand make core making by sand because of many reasons and one of the reason is that even use of clay as binder does not produce enough strength which should be able to sustain the metallostatic pressure or thermal conditions under which the core is subjected to. So, normally we use organic, organic binders. The generally used binders are linseed oil, core oil, resins, dextrin, molasses, etc. So, these are the general used binders, core oil is mixture of linseed, soya, fish and petroleum oils and coal tar. So, basically this is the organic binder that is used for making the cores. So, these binders basically are burnt away by the heat of melt and make the core collapsible during the cooling of casting. But first of all it gives larger strength because being a organic binder the strength developed is because of the polymerization and then they are also burnt away by the heat and then 
they give the collapsibility because they create the void spaces which help in giving the collapsibility property to the core. Amount of binder required depends on great depends to a great extent on the fineness of sand grains. So, as the fineness of the sand grains will be more and more the amount of binder required will be different that means it will increase basically. Also if the clay is there clay basically absorbs binders. So, that way having the clay is deleterious because it increases the consumption of the binders. So, we should see that minimum amount of clay is available in the core sand. Then we have dryers which are used to hasten the polymerization process. So, they are also working as the catalyst to polymerization process or provide additional oxygen and heat from the reaction. So, we also use, so we use certain dryers like aluminum nitrate, sodium perborate, manganese dioxide, manganese oleate etc. So, they are basically used with liquid oils and resins. In that case, we are using these dryers to so that this polymerization process takes place hastily and there will be more heat generated and the strength will be developed early. You have different types of additives also used cereals and water soluble binders they increase the green strength of the core. You have sulphide binders, pitch, wood floor, release agents, thermo setting plastics, inorganic binders and water. So, these are the different binders, these are the different additives which give the specific properties like you have some hot strength development by using the pitch, you have the wood floor which is used for giving the collapsibility, you have the release agents which are used so that the flowability characteristics are increased. Thermosetting plastics are also used because they are giving the strength to this core sands or, or that mass. Inorganic binders are also some sort of clays, carbonite clays or some clays are also used. And then water which is already there, water as such is not used, but this water is used which is already there in the binders which we use that is 2 to 5 percent of water is there. If we use more water there will be stratification of water and that will basically affect the quality of core which we are going to use. So, these are the normal additives which are used in the process of core making. Now, if we do not make the cores of proper size or in proper manner then there may be different types of core defects. Now, these core defects are like off gauge or off size. So, it may be of different size not proper size core may be sticking because of the different sur surface characteristics to the surface of the metal and then it will be difficult to remove the core or sticking to the core boxes where you are making. So, that is, is related to that process where it sticks to the core boxes. Inaccurate core assembly then fins cracked cores these are so you may have the surface appearance like you may have generation of fins or you may have the cracked cores these are the types of defects which are encountered while making cores that may lead to having the blow or dirt blow is nothing but the gaseous type of defects because of the large amount of gases being generated that may lead to blows inside the casting. You may have dirt because if there is loose sand if there is no proper finish that may go into the casting. So, that may be dirt you may have core raise core shift. So, core may core may go at a higher place because of the buoyancy and if not properly supported then it may lead to 
this problem of core rays. So, that will basically change the dimension of the core or, or the cavity which we are going to make or it may be out of place. So, that is core rays, core may be shifting. So, that is also going to be because of the improper positioning of the core, it may go one side or other because of the metallostatic pressure if not properly fastened to its place or properly seated to its place. So, that may come there may be metal penetration into the core depending upon the surface quality of the core. So, in that case there may be the different appearance or there may be affected surface finish of the casting because of this whole I mean qualities of the cores you may have the defects like hot tears caps and buckles these are these are the basically uh, defects may be because of the stresses generated because of the stresses generated at the corners or because of the quality of the core surface by because of which there are cracks generated. So, these are the casting defects which can occur because of cores you may have crusts or fissures. So, these are the different types of core defects which are likely to come if the quality of the core is not maintained properly. So, we have already studied about the different types of machines which are used in case of core making like jolt, jolt squeeze, slinging or so or core blower. So, these are the different types of machines which we had discussed earlier when we used to make the cores. Now, we will discuss about the types of cores. So, what are the different types of courses which are used in the foundry practice. So, cores are basically named according to their shape and position in the mold. So, different type of shapes at different positions we use the cores based on that you we give the different names. First of all depending upon the type of sand used we may have green sand core where the core is made of made by using the pattern. So, that type of core is known as green sand core. So, when you are making the mold cavity that time with the pattern itself you make the core. So, that uh, the core is made of the green sand and once we pour into it it will work as the cores and you can get the cavity at that places. And if you use the dry sand then it is known as dry sand cores which is basically used for making the cores in the core making shop and there we use the core boxes. So, that is so that is why we have green sand core as well as dry sand core. Then you can make the core in a single piece using split type of core boxes or you may have the core boxes using the separate core boxes make the two pieces and then these two pieces are made to be joined to each other by using the core gum or paste. So, this way we are making the cores either in one piece or in two pieces and or in multiple pieces and we can make the cores by by attaching these different pieces. Depending upon their position in the mold, how they are kept in the mold, they are classified as horizontal core or vertical core. So, if it is kept horizontally in the mold, so axis is horizontal of the core then it is known as horizontal core and if it is kept vertically, if in the casting you have vertical size of holes, vertical direction of holes in that case and if they are kept in, in the vertically direction. So, then it is known as vertical cores. So, basically they are known as a stock cores because normally we use either horizontal core or vertical cores in general. So, en masse they are used and that is why they are used known as stock cores because we make the horizontal core or vertical core of different dimensions and then keep in with us ready so that whenever we require we can use them. So, they are also known as stock cores. Then depending, de depending upon the different shapes we have or its positions we have one is balanced core. So, the balanced core is by definition it has opening on only one side 
and it is balanced by having the support on one side of the in the mold. So, if you have a cavity like this, so if you have to make a cavity a, a casting like this, so what we do is and this is your molding material in that case you have a, a core of this side this type which will basically come and then in this side you have the support. So, this is your core and it way this way you have all this sand and this is supported here from by the core print. So, this is core print. So, what we see is only on this side it is supported and this side. So, this way you can get the cavity like this here it will work as the core and this way you will have this recess cavities. So, these type of cores are used as balanced cores. The care which has to be taken in such cores is that you have to make these core print quite stronger because it has to sustain the whole weight of the core. So, the core print has to be large enough to support the weight of the core and what we do normally is even to keep it in its own position we may also use the chaplets to support the core. So, we will study about the chaplets later. Then there is a cover core where the entire pattern is rammed in the drag and the core is to be suspended from the top of the mold. So, basically in that case what happens if you have such cavity in that case if you have to make like this. Now, if completely in the drag then this can be your core. So, you will get this cavity. So, completely done in the drag portion and this is just kept. So, because of this core you will have this cavity generated and such cores are known as the cover core. So, it stretches vertically downwards. So, this way you have the cover cores. Then hanging core, now what happens sometimes we need to hang it. So, no support at the bottom in the drag. So, basically in this case what we see is your this place is basically nothing here you have met metal. So, this way your structure will be like this and here it will be a straight line and then this way it goes. So, it is supported at the bottom this type of course have a support at the bottom whereas, when there is no support at the bottom in that case the same thing needs to be hanged. So, that it is hanging from the top portion from the cope side. So, then it is known as a hanging core. So, in that case if you have the core like this and you have to make the cavity now like this in this case this is not the cavity part in the case of cover core, but while if we make the hanging core in that case this part needs to be hanged. So, this is lifted from the side from the top then it is known as a hanging core because there is no support here if we do not hang it this this will fall here so, then it will be a variety of cover core, but when we need to hang it from the top portion then it is known as a hanging core. Then there is a wing core or stop of core you need to have this course when a hole or recess is to be obtained in the casting either above or below the parting line. So, basically what happens in such some cases if you have cavity going like this and you need to have a hole here. So, such holes you cannot make or your course cannot be placed as such. So, what we do is you provide certain certain part in such a way that 
it can be part of it. So, this comes like a surface of this and these cores are known as the wing core. So, otherwise you cannot have the recess here, you cannot do the drilling here in the casting. So, you have to have the support on this side, so that you get a cavity in this portion. Then you have and since it makes a surface of the casting, so it, it goes like this. So, it makes a surface that is why it is known as the stop off core and kiss cores they are basically held in position between cope and drag simply by pressure of the cope. So, basically pattern is not provided with core print. So, when the pattern is not providing the core print there is no support for the core and the core is to be we have to have the core only between the two boxes and, and by only by the contact they are basically supported then and they are touching these two boxes the upper and lower molding boxes then they are known as the kiss course because when there is no such risk, I mean requirement that there has to be completely appropriate size or numbers then it is known as. So, then we use the kiss course. Core prints and chaplets we have discussed. So, basically when we have a core then we have to have some surface. So, we have to support it on the side in the cavity. So, this is the core print and core prints are basically required to support the core on both the sides. So, this is core print and this is core print. So, core print is basically that provides the core a seat, so that it can have its seat in the mold cavity. Whereas, the chaplets are provided at the bottom. So, chaplets are basically chaplets are there to support the core, so that because of the battlostatic pressure or because of the buoyancy forces this course do not get shifted. So, basically the chaplets must be of the same material as that of the molten metal because this this forms this this is the metal this is the metal. So, chaplet will ultimately fuse with the metal. So, chaplet has to be of the same material as that of the metal I mean the cast metal. So, this way core prints and the chaplets they are different and both serve the function of holding the core in its own place in different way. Thank you.